Hi and welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to use 3D printing to fix a household problem. A few months ago I bought myself one of those desktop mini milling machines. I'll put some pictures somewhere around on the screen so that you can see what I'm talking about. And um, the other day I managed to break it. Now what it is, it's a, it's, some people say it's a manufacturing defect. It's not. It's actually a safety feature inside the device. So the device has a gearbox inside of it and it, it kind of like drives a tool into metal and uh, if it all kind of gets jammed up then the uh, the motor stops but the control board keeps driving current into the motor which then makes the control board get hot and some it's got to give and I'd, I'd rather break this four pound cog or gear as we call them uh, then, then overload a, a 130 pound circuit board inside the motor controller. So yeah, as you can see, there's um, there's a tooth missing. It just literally just snapped it straight off. Um, you probably can see. I don't know if you can see from that side, but the cog is is completely split to the center. Can I show you the split in it? It's split to the center down from the keyway. So I've been looking for one of these things, and I've contacted a guy. It's covered in absolute crap. Hence the gloves. I've contacted the guy and he gets them from China, but it's going to be about four or five weeks before he gets any in, which we'll be buying anyway when he gets them. So I thought, surely I can use technology and uh, and science to 3D print one. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump into a card package and I'm going to model it up. I'm going to do some quick basic measurements of it, model it up, and I'm going to print it out of ASA. Now I got some recycled ASA from Filamentive uh, a couple of weeks ago. Okay, a bit longer than a couple of weeks ago. And um, I've been doing some test prints with it, and it's really nice stuff. So if you want to see it, I'll, I'll show you that in another video. Just let us know in the comments. But uh, this video is all about this gear, or cog, and, and how I'm going to measure it up, and, and how I'm going to print it. So let's just jump in. Oh, before we jump into the CAD window, uh, there's something else you need to know. Uh, I changed jobs about a year ago, and now I work for a SolidWorks reseller. So the CAD package I'm going to be using today is going to be SolidWorks. You know, I've got access to it, so I may as well use it. If you want me to use the other CAD packages because you've got access to them, just let me know. If you're quite happy for me to continue to use SolidWorks, just let me know. Uh, I've got an HDMI captured device thing, so I haven't got it installed on my machine. I just literally capture the screen off another laptop. It works pretty well. But anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to jump into SolidWorks now. And we're going to measure it up and we're going to get something modeled so let's go so here we are in SolidWorks and uh, what I'm going to do is I've got the old dial vernie and the broken part and we're just going to take some measurements and we're going to model it up so this is not the right way to measure a gear okay I know I know I'm just gonna wing it so that's about 48 millimeters and in the root we're probably looking at about 40, is that 41 or 42? Oh, that could be 41. Let's just get a decent. Ah, I think that's 41. Right, okay. I'm going to call that 41. 41 ish. Um, right, the bore is, let's have a look. The bore is 10. It's a 4mm, 4mm keyway. Uh, the thickness is about 10, and we've got that lump, which is about 3, and it's about 18. And the lump sits kind of like on there, it's so that the, 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 the gear is spaced up. The teeth, oh, who knows how you measure these things. Let's just have a go. I think that's going to be, I'm going to make that 3. And whatever size it is, it is. Right, okay. So, I've got some. Let's create a new part. <clears throat> and uh, let's just, when it feels like it, let's get a, a new sketch going. A front plane will do, it doesn't matter. If I press the keyboard, it's either numbers or the S key, okay? So, if you don't see us pressing things up here like that, it's just because I've pressed the S key. Now, I'm going to make that 41. And I'm going to make that 10. But because it's 3D printed, I'm going to make it 10.25 because holes always turn out slightly smaller. 
and uh, I'm going to extrude that so features extrude and I'm going to extrude a 10 mil thick and then I'm going to put another sketch on top another circle that's going to be that's an S key again it's going to be 18 in diameter and I'm going to convert that entity as well so that when I extrude that it's got a hole in and we said that was three thick yeah Right, what I'm actually going to do, because uh, I want to, is put a like a 2mm fillet on there, just to make it print a bit better. It doesn't really like going sharp transitions and stuff. Right, now I need a, a keyway in here. We said it was a 4mm key, didn't we? So if I put that there and do that, and then I press that and hold down shift and press that one and make them equal, and then do D. No, sorry, S. S dimension, 4mm. That's it there. And finally, that wants to be vertical to there. And that should be... I'm going to make that 4.1, actually. Just so that it's a little bit bigger. And that should be our key way. That's be that, the, that, effectively, that's where the key is. That, that, that is the key, how it sits in. And I want to extrude and cut. That's a different button, SolidWorks, isn't it? And I'm just going to say through all. Right. So there's my keyway. There's my bore. It's all looking pretty nice. Let's uh, go on to there and create a new sketch. Because these teeth are a bit weird. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a circle on. And I'm going to say that that's a, that, that, that the circle. Press escape five times to you. That circle is a, is a construction line, and I'm going to put a line on as well, and I'm going to say that line is also a construction line, and I'm going to trim the top of it off, right, and then press escape a few times, press S, and that we said was 48 millimeters, yeah? So that's where the, the, the kind of like the top of the tooth is going to be. And now we need some lines in, so we're just going to draw something. Uh, something probably like that and I'm going to convert that entity as well because I need it and I'll trim that bottom piece off and that probably wants to go to there and then I probably want to shift it select those and say mirror and then mirror them around that center line right now I can trim that away yeah that looks that looks okay and then dimension the bottom so between that vertical and that vertical i'm going to call that three and this piece at the top i'm going to call that 1.5 and this piece here i'm going to, probably going to call that 1.25 mm, probably 1.5 actually 1.5 What do you reckon? Yeah, I think that looks okay. I think that looks okay. And now, at least I know the outside diameter is going to be right. And now, if I extrude and boss that, uh, switch direction and go 10. Oh, no, just, just, just 10. That'll do. Merge result. Go. Right. Okay. And I fill it. Uh, in there, just making sure the screen's still recording. You, you've no idea how many times I've had to do this video. Three, um, two fillets in there. Right, okay. So instead of having to do all of them again and work the angles out, I'm just going to do a circular pattern. And I'm going to say I want the circular pattern to be around there, and I want it to be of the fillet as well as the extrude, and I want it to be thirty because of thirty teeth, right? Do that. Bingo. One gear. So, I should probably put like an angled chamfer on those teeth to make it more true to life, but I'm not going to do that. This is going to be made out of recycled ASA on a 3D printer, so the entire purpose of this gear is to fail if the mechanism jams, and it, it saves you kind of like burning the motor drive board out in the milling machine, so I don't really know how this is going to react. I don't know what fill density to, to do it. I don't, want to, I don't want to make it too strong and then smash the rest of the gearbox, so 
I'm just gonna just gonna wing it <laughs> in the slicer. Um, I'll not record what settings I use. I'll just tell you when I get to the printer. So what I'll do is I'll export this as an STL. We'll slice it up. We'll shove it on the printer, and then you can see how well it prints. See you in a bit. So that's the print finished. Um, it printed out in about an hour and ten minutes, and I've removed the brim. It's got a bit of hair stuck to it, and hopefully you can see what the layers are like, what the top layers like, and what the holes like. The yeah, uh, there's a bit of glue residue on the bottom, but hopefully, you can see what's going on there. I'm just looking at the viewfinder to make sure you can see as much of it as you can. I'm hoping it's going to be in focus. I did give the bottom a bit of a rub with a, one of those emery nail file things to uh, to clean it up. But that's that's it there. Uh, that is Filamentives ASA from Recycled uh, ABS, I think it's made out of. It's uh, as strong as ABS, but it is resistant to UV. So if you're making things to go in your car, uh, make them out of this stuff because then they won't melt or become brittle with the sun Right what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into the garage And we're going to see if this thing fits on the Miller machine and we'll see more importantly if and how it runs So let's go So this is the top of the Miller machine and That's the shaft where the cog goes, the motor's just there So what I'll do is I'll uh, line up the key Push that down, and then you uh, simply put this screw in. Screwdriver somewhere. Shake your camera work, I know. Right. So that's on there, and then on here, you can see there's the the cog that meshes with it. So let's. Uh, Place, seems to be. Seems to be okay. So I'll uh, I'll put the screws back in, and then we'll uh, see what happens. So that's all back together. There you go. See, it's all in there. So let's put you there. Right, don't try this at home. It seems to drive quite well. So, that seems to be a success. Well, what can I say? That's incredible. A 3D printed gear has uh, has fixed a milling machine. Well, a mini milling machine. And just in case all these people who jump on the comments say, Ah, those milling machines aren't very good. It's a lightweight machine. It's designed for doing really shallow cuts. You know, it, it's not a bridge port machine. You know, it's not CNC. It's not going to plow material out. And the cogs are designed to break rather than, like, let's say, burn out the motor controller. 
So what I am going to do is the internal gearbox components, I'm going to replace those with metal, but this cog on the top, I'm going to leave that one as plastic. And if it smashes and it saves us 140 quid every time on a, on a motor control board, I'll just wait an hour and print one out. Um, that That's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to show a real life problem where we could solve it with card and 3D printing. And we've certainly done that. So... Uh, until next time, I've been Steve. Thanks for listening.